Welcome to Relics of Sports Talk, episode 19. Here with former Harrisonburg star running back Marcus Robinson Jenkins. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing great. How about you, Dad? All right, good. Everybody's here to see your big commitment. Um, that's what the viewers are here for. But before we start getting into that, I want to remind you and to tell the other two schools that are interested in you all the things you accomplished at Harrisonburg. Right. I mean, you you won the Valley District title twice with Harrisonburg. Right. You were first team all district twice at defensive back. Right. All all first team all district three times at running back. Even your senior year when you got hurt, you only played six games. Right. And twice all district and special teams. First team all conference defensive back and second team all conference running back. All area defensive back one year, all area all purpose athlete and all area running back three separate years. Right. And then you actually made an all region 5D running back first team. That was a huge year when y'all went to the second round of the playoffs and y'all lost the staff. Right. With Devin Ford. Yep. Uh, you made the playoffs twice in your three years playing on the varsity team. And you finished your career at, at the FCA Valley All Star Game. Right. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. So you got a lot of stuff going on. But during your Harrisonburg career, a lot of schools, a lot of these schools might not really understand and remember. Your very first game, you were a sophomore. Right. You weren't even a starter. You started on defense, right? Mm, cornerback. Yeah. That first game, you had three touchdowns. Yeah. And a pick six. Three the first game. How'd you, did you know you arrived after that? I mean, like, I just felt like I, I had earned a, earned some more playing time. You know what I'm saying? I was I was humbled. Cause it was it was a big game, but it was it was only one game. You know what I'm saying? I had to move to the next. You know what I'm saying? I had to keep performing, keep keep on the roll. You know what I'm saying? That's what I did throughout my sophomore year. I just kept on the roll, kept balling out. You know what I'm saying? I earned a spot, got more carries, and and finished off the year. Yeah, I had a great year. You know, you did, and it's crazy because the two schools that we that your final two. That's why I'm wearing black and gold and purple and gold, so we <laughs> so we can figure out what's going on. Right. But one of them talking about you playing defense, one of them talking about you playing offense. We already talked about your accolades. Mm-hmm. So somebody's getting a stud um, for one of the teams, uh, James Madison University. That's here locally here in Harrisonburg. The first time you ever stepped on that field, first time, you had 12 carries, 120 yards, including a 71 yard touchdown run and three touchdowns. You remember that game? I remember Broadway. Yeah, isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah. I mean, that was the first time you were on a college field and you tore it up. Right. But not to be how done the second time you stepped on that field the next year. Wayne, bro. You had 11 carries this time, 121 yards, three receptions for 90 yards, including a, a 73-yard play and two touchdowns. Right. I mean, so that field's been kind to you. For sure. For That's sure. crazy. For sure. Um, first playoff game that y'all had in a long time. Harrisburg went without the playoffs for a long period of time. Um, so y'all's class came in. Um, you had 140, 46 yards, three touchdowns, and a win. Right. Because the, the year before that, y'all lost to TA in the last game. Yep. Tough loss. Tough loss. I'll never forget that TA game. No, y'all lost that game. But that's going to come back around when we get to the end of this. <laughs> uh, the second playoff game, you got hurt. The start of the third quarter in a one-score game. But do you know that you only had eight carries? But you had 108 yards, including a 59-yard touchdown run. That if you look at his huddle, you're going to see him spin around. People think he's down, and he goes. (laughs) And he also had a 40-some-yard touchdown run that got called back. First quarter. Remember that? That was crazy. After that, you got selected to the All-American Bowl for the offensive defense in New Orleans. And you weren't even 100%. How'd you, how'd you work through that? It was it was tough, like, especially with an injury like that. It takes a long time to recover. And I wasn't even fully recovered, but I just went out there and... That's what I mean. You went, you tore through. some tendons. Yeah. And so mentally, that had to be as much as, as physically. Yeah, it, it was definitely an obstacle. But it was like, it, it's a mental thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just had to stop thinking about it and just think about what I can do. What I, mean, I, what I knew I could do. And I, and I still, like, I didn't perform as well as I, I could have 100%. But I definitely went went out there and made some plays, you know. And you had to go out there with other All Americans from all over everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And you still started on defense. Yep. And that's crazy. That's what these schools need to know, and their fan base need to know the kind of mentality that you're going to have, right. and the work ethic that you're going to have. You know, right. it's not a flash in the pan. Right. You will work through all adversity, and that's that's a huge thing for you. Exactly. Um, senior year comes. 
you happy to get on the field. You're playing a preseason game against Ari Lee. Mm-hmm. First couple of handoffs, you're running good. You're feeling good. Great. We of course we were like get out the game. We were like nah, give me the ball. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, it's a scrimmage, you know what I'm saying. And then the fluke thing happens. You're making a block. Somebody lands, fractures your fractures your leg a little bit. Right, right. How, how, how did you feel doing that, especially after coming off of an injury? It was it was definitely tough, especially like thinking about my senior years. Like you know what I'm saying, this is my last year before, even if I get an opportunity, because I didn't have offers yet. Um, or not, I, I did have all You did have some offers right there, but you were worried about them not yet. Yeah, nothing was guaranteed, you know. Right. So it was, it was just, it was a tough battle I went through. And then I, 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 I warmed up for Broadway. I think that's like the fifth or sixth game of the right, season. Right, But I didn't even get to play because the trainer said I wasn't 100. percent They wouldn't, they wouldn't let me go out there and get hurt anymore. So I was like, you know, what I'm saying I stood on the sideline. That was definitely tough. Like I was definitely, I mean, I was rooting my team on, but it was. But you were, you were was, eager to get like, out. Yeah, there. I wanted to get out there and play with my brothers, and you know. It was just tough, but in the next game... Uh, in the next game, yeah. where, was, where was that located? At JMU. James Madison again. We already talked about what you did. So what happened in the JMU game? The very first game of your senior year, your very first touch, what happened? Very first very first play, it was a kickoff. Kicked it right to me and took it all the way to the crib. All, all the way. way. All the way. And One touch, touch, touchdown. First touch. That was unbelievable. And you also finished that game with three touchdowns. And had one more call back. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty pretty uh, happy comeback there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, welcome sure. back. Oh it was, my it was a great goodness. start off of, off of, off a of tough injury, you know. And your mind had to be. Was you was your were you mentally ready for that? Were you scared about your first hit when somebody hit you? I couldn't. I, I didn't even think about things like that because I couldn't. Like you can't. I can't dwell on things like that. I got to go out there and give it my all, and that's what I did. And you know, I, I showed out. And, and, I was, <laughs> and I was. I was. I felt like I was back after that. So going through your senior year, which we already said you made it all that Valley District with just six games. That shows mm-hmm. how dominating those six games you had. The final game of the year of the regular season, you had to play that T18 that we talked about your sophomore year that knocked you out from – you won the Valley District, but you didn't get to go to the playoffs. Right. So that game against TA, you remember that game? Mm-hmm. It was in TA. Oh, yeah. Do you know you had 19 carries, 226 yards, and three touchdowns? That's the way to send them off and say, that's for what you did my sophomore year. Exactly. exactly. So I like that. Then your final game, you made it to the playoffs, 18 carries, 103 yards, three receptions, 68 yards, and a touchdown. Played a good game. The team, you know, had some turnovers here or there. But Tough loss. Not to end it on a bad note, you got selected to play in the prestigious Blue-Gray All-American Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Right. In Jerry World, Jerry Jones Cowboy Stadium. Dallas, what was that like? Walking was, on that field, it was incredible. Like just just being in a stadium like that and just seeing how big of a like big how big football actually is. It's just it was just and, crazy. And before it even game, you you were there for a week, right? Mm-hmm. So you, you met some coaches and stuff there, right? Right. Who would you would you meet out there? Former players. I met uh, Chris Taylor. He was Chris my right Taylor, That's my dude, man. He was my all right, best all right, coach. my all right. best coach. Uh, great dude. Who Played else you meet? Um. I he met, played for the Saints. <laughs> I met I met um, the dude that rocked T.O. Oh, George T. Yeah, he was your coach. Yeah, he was my yeah. head coach. I met I met. We saw Mark, Grilla McMillan. Mark McMillan. Yeah. yeah. Um, Seneca Wallace Seneca was out Wallace, there. Yeah. The original Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, so you got to you got to practice it with all these you know NFL minds and everything else. Not to mention what how many other Virginia boys was out there. None. One it was just one, yeah, right? One. The quarterback. Yeah. So it was you, him, and the, nobody else from Virginia. Yeah. That's crazy. That Blackbird. speaks volumes for you guys. Then. Mm-hmm. That's crazy because for speaking sure. of that quarterback that was from Virginia, the first time you got on the field, um, he happened to throw you a little screen pass. Mm-hmm. Virginia, Virginia. What happened on that play? Touchdown. How many yards was that? About forty. Forty some yards. 40 something. So you had another first touch. First touchdown again, like you did your in the JV game. Yeah. I mean, that's that's amazing. The crazy thing that's is, amazing. I told Chris Taylor. Chris Taylor, I, like before the game, I was like, first time I touched the ball, I'm gonna score a watch. And I told him. Before, you told before, Chris before Taylor the, that before the game, he'll tell you what. Yeah, and I scored the first time I touched the ball. He made me up. We, I like, saw y'all chest, chest bumping. Bump. Yeah. If you ain't seen the video, go check it out. They yeah. chest bump. <laughs> Chris Taylor got real up. <laughs> well, now that everybody got a feel for you, um, now I want you to answer some questions for us, um. Because we know you went through a lot with this whole recruiting thing. Um, first time, you know, it's bittersweet with so forth. 
But when you ended your career for the Harrison Bird Blue Streaks, how did you feel about transitioning going to the Naval Academy? I knew it was going to be a, I knew it was going to be a tough, like a tough transition, just because I didn't know any. I was like new to all the military aspects and everything, and it was a, a, like it, just a, a jump to college football in general was a big right. transition. So I had to go through both of that, both of those things, and it was it was it was tough. It was, yeah, I couldn't imagine. It was tough, but I, I definitely got through it, you know. You got to get, you know, I mean, I had to adapt, you know what I'm saying? I definitely had to adapt to, like, new surroundings, new expectations of me, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so. So, you, you start, you went to the a prep school, you know, a year early, whatever. Mm -hmm. While at NAPS, what did you learn about yourself? Because not everybody can do that, man. What did you learn about yourself? I knew if I put, anything I put my mind to, I could definitely do if I got okay. through that. It was it was tough. Like I, I was like at first like the first day it was like culture shock and I was just like I don't know if I can do this and like I talked right. to my parents and like when I talked to my parents I just got like motivation. It was just like yeah you can do this like you you got through this week and then you just keep going like keep pushing and that's what I did through the whole the whole time the whole time was tough like it didn't get easier especially like with academics and everything oh, balancing yeah. everything out it was definitely tough but it, it was that's what it's all about it's time management and I got I learned a lot about learning studying I learned a lot about academics I learned a lot about myself and I learned about a lot about football and it just made me a better person I grew I grew over the past year and it was it was a it was an experience it was an amazing experience that's good that's good it's a good way to look at it and you know especially how it resulted in the ending right but because a lot of people a lot of your boys and a lot of people you bonded with didn't survive it they either transferred out or something happened they couldn't make it but after you actually completed that so let's get this on the record <laughs> You completed through this process. You didn't quit there. You didn't leave nothing up there. You you completed it. Right. Um, and with all the world things going on with COVID and new admirals and all this, found out that your scholarship wasn't going to be honored so far. So what was your mind at then? Um, I mean, you went through all this rigorous of naps, and now it's like, oh, that was for nothing. Yeah, I mean, it, it was tough, but but at the end of the day, it was it was like everything happens for a reason, yeah. you know? And then I opened up my recruitment not too long ago. Found a couple schools that were interested in me. What school? What kind of schools call, contacted you when you when you put recruitment number two? <laughs> um, like just like a lot of coaches that recruited me before in high school, like had okay. hit me up, asked what happened. Like, sure. Like coach coach uh, from Hawaii, a coach from Hawaii that I knew that had used to coach in, at Howard. Um, just like like JMU hit me, like, like JMU, Alabama State, of course. You know what I'm saying? North Texas was interested. Western Illinois. Okay, so um, you, you did have some schools. Yeah, you know? I had some schools. So that helps you bounce back. So I had all these choices and all these decisions. And with the process going long, you know, it's, a lot of people didn't have opportunities. A lot of people would have probably taken you, taken you, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. You still had two quality universities that wanted you. Right. So tell me about these, your your top two, and then your ultimate decision. Um, well... Of course, JMU is my hometown, you know what I'm saying, representing Harrisonburg, Virginia. That's right, the Dukes. Yeah, like, I've, I've grown up watching them. It, it would be, you know, it's a great place to play football. It's a great football team, great atmosphere, great coaches, you know what I'm saying, great school all around. And then Alabama State, on the other hand, it's a new, newer school that was interested in me because JMU was, like, interested in me when I was in high school. So it's a newer school. Okay. Got, in with, got in good with some, some good people, some great coaches. And uh, found out more about the university, learned more about it at HBCU. All right. A lot of a lot of respect towards that school, and um, it's it's another great place to play football. Amazing amazing atmosphere at the football games and everything. So it's two amazing schools. It's win wins. It looks right. like, huh? Right. And they both looks like they both remodeling their stadiums. Both of them got newer stadiums right, and everything right, going right. on. So as you grab your confetti and get it ready. <laughs> To, to spread the announcement to let everybody know um, who's it going to be? Uh, I'll be continuing my football and academic career at Alabama State. <laughs> Go Hornets! Hornets, baby! Yes. Congratulations! Yes. Congratulations! Yes. <laughs> Alright, Hornet Nation, here he comes! Here let's he comes! Go, let's go. Alright. Hey, thank y'all. Relatives of Sports Talk. Check out the next episode. Thank you.